Hey, it's James, Fathers Rights and Resources, hashtag How I Got Custody. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I know it's not so happy for a lot of people out there. You know, Thanksgiving, I think, is the holiday where it's a peak period of time for suicides because, you know, obviously Thanksgiving is a traditional family gathering period of time. And, you know, families are dysfunctional and broken all over America and Western civilization. So, uh, and then there's people who have family, but the family either they got a fallen out or whatever, of course. So, I just wanted to say that however down you're feeling and however much heavier the weight gets during the holidays, you know, you have to look at your custody battle in the long term. If you say, here and now, I want my kids. I wish I had my kids right now. I, sh I should have been with my kids. And that's all you can think about. You're just putting the burden on yourself and your mind. You know, you know, yearning to escape and get out of the situation and everything. You're just adding more pain to yourself. And there's nothing you can do about what's going on right now. And me saying that, it doesn't make it easier. Of course. But if you have this mindset for the long term, one of the things that helped me was that, you know, I told myself if I keep losing in court, which I did at first, like I didn't really have, you know, my baby's mom didn't get a restraining order, but while she was trying to get a restraining order, I didn't see my daughter for 40 days. She lived three blocks away. And, uh, when I went to, after the two hearings on a restraining order, she tried to do an anti-harassment order against me. Ends up being the same thing. You're restrained from your kids, the mom. It's a crime if you violate it. Whether it's domestic violence protection order, restraining order, temporary restraining order. People love to get caught up in the terms. You're restrained from your kids, and if you violate it, you get you go to jail. Okay? It's the same thing in effect, no matter what you title it. But, you know, I remember around my birthday, my mom and sister took me out and they're like, what do you want for your birthday? And I said, nothing. But inside I was saying, you know, I just want to see my daughter. I almost broke down crying. We were out at dinner, like we were out at dinner, lunch for my birthday for at Red Robin. And that's all I could think about. That's all I cared about. But what helped me was my mentality that if I lose again and again, I'm going to court until my daughter's 18. I had my own worst case scenario. Worst case scenario, I'm just going to keep fighting. And I looked toward the day when she turned 18 and she said, where were you all my life? Why did you abandon me? Why didn't you see me? I could say, look at this stack of paperwork that goes up to the roof. Go talk to your mom about why I wasn't involved. I can at least say I was going to be able to face my daughter. But what ended up happening is the mentality that I had had me fighting and fighting and fighting and that's how most people win 90% 95% of court cases settle out of court the person who surrenders the most is usually the person who surrenders the most is usually the one who got beat down the most because the other side got on the offensive went to war did discovery and all this other stuff You know, anybody who's in a war, sent off to war, Vietnam, Iraq, Pakistan, you know, or wherever, Afghanistan, wherever a soldier sent off to war, if they hate it, and, well, I mean, one of the things that keeps soldiers hopeful and battling is that they're going to come home someday, you know, they're fighting for a cause or so they think, you know, there's controversies whether wars are legit or they created by the military industrial complex, but the mentality for the individual soldier and for them to get through it was the longing and hope that they were gonna be home one day, you know? And so I'm actually going to meet up with my 23 year old daughter right now. Um, or a late little Thanksgiving get together. But um, the thing is, 
when you look at it like I'm in a long-term battle, a long-term war here, this isn't the end of it. The pain and suffering I have right now that intensifies at Thanksgiving or Christmas or on the kids' birthdays. You got to think, I'm going to engage in this war and I'm going all out and I'm fighting until the end. And if that's on your mind, then these little bumps in the road don't matter because your end goal is the end goal. And getting full custody of the end, taking your case to trial, getting on the offensive until the mother or the other side wears down and wants to throw in the towel and surrender. If that's the goal and that's on your mind, it's not going to be easy at all, but it's going to be easier to deal with these setbacks and these times where you wish you had your kids. You're going to miss your kids. You're going to ache for your kids, long for your kids or whatever. <coughs> but just like in a hostage situation or somebody, you know, has your kids missing or whatever. And you find out where your kids are. But you got to negotiate with the hostages or, you know, a hostage like the, what, in the late 70s. There was an Iranian crisis. They had hostages or any other hostage situation. People know their family is there and they don't just quit because they're missing them now or give up. They know they're going to come home one day. And it's just looking forward to that day when they do come home, when there's a resolution, when this thing ends. If you don't get on the offensive and you don't go to war and you don't fight the right way, you're in a losing battle. You have to you have to do that. You have to give yourself the best chance to get something fair. You're in a war. You have to put up a warfare like effort. I just talked to somebody yesterday and he has trial coming up and he has every other weekend. The mother only wanted him to have one weekend. He has every other weekend. And then when he went from uh uh magistrate, commissioner, friend of the court, and appealed to a judge, he got one day added because they gave him three weekend days. He got one day added. And so I was like, why don't you do a reconsideration and say, well, if you're going to add one more day, why not another day? Why not two? Why not three? What's the difference? And he told me how you know bad his attorney was doing with that stuff. And his attorney is saying he's, he's going to go for 50-50, but he hasn't done really a deposition he hasn't got on the offensive in the past year that his custody battles have been going on. And his attorney says, well, it's a really slim chance to get 50-50. And there's no chance to get custody. You have a better chance of getting full custody than 50-50 because courts don't like kids going back and forth. That's why the Father's Rights Movement folks who say, well, we're not going to lower ourselves to the mother's standard and try and get custody. Kids need both parents. No, you stupid jackass. The parent withholding the child or forcing you to be ever the weekend parent is starving the child of a basic life need. If they starved him of food, you wouldn't say, well, I, I want the child half the time. So when the child's with the mother and she starves them one week and then I get them one week, at least I could give them food for one week. You wouldn't say that. You would say she's a child abuser and get the kids away from her. But you know, the fruity weirdos in the father's rights movement should be like, what is it? The Father's Right. T-F-R-M. Should be the fruity, retarded movement. Because everything about it has done nothing. They haven't made a scratch or a dent in the 20 years I've seen them sitting around doing nothing. And then their leaders in each chapter come and go and disappear. Unless they enjoy the donations and the half ass and their advocacy. But... At the same time, if you go for 50-50, you're saying this other parent is wonderful and great. And she's saying you're a monster and you're saying she's great. You just gave her more credence and more support by you're saying she's great. You're, you're the only one getting attacked. So you're the only one the court's concerned about. So you just helped her argument. And then I told this dad, I said, you know, you haven't even, you know, your best chance at getting full custody is wearing somebody down. That's happened in my case. I wore the mother down until she surrendered and quit. 95% of court cases, people say, oh, that's not really a win. Getting your kids is a win, dumbass. Getting your kid is a win. Whether the other person defaults, they surrender, you negotiate a mediation, or you go to trial. However you get the kids, getting kids a win. And I said, you're not fighting. He goes, I've been fighting. I said, dude, did you do deposition? Did you do this? Did you read? And he said, no, you're not fighting if you're not using every tool available. Now